Hello and welcome back to Let's Find the O&W Railroad. Or, well, what's left of it, really. I mean, it, you know, abandoned in 57, but uh, there's still a lot of it left around. Anyway, let's start in Cornwall here. And hopefully this isn't going to lag too much. I'm using Bing Maps this time. Last time for just the overview was Google with the uh, with the terrain map to show the mountains and stuff. But now with Bing, with the satellite, you can really see a lot. Well, we'll so start off by showing you what the West Shore Railroad, West Shore Line, I should say, looks like. New York Central West Shore here. That's still a very profitable big railroad. It's CSX now. Pretty much all the freight runs up and down this side of the river. Uh, that was the wrong way. Uh, disregard my poor direction sense. One more. There. So, um, as you can see, you can see these big double tracks right here. That's the West Shore that's still being used. CSX. And, um, but O and W started right here. See this little, well it's not an island, but it's kind of like an island because the railroad cuts off. But this little area here, it's just all wilderness right now. That was the O and W uh, marshalling yard, the terminus yard. And, you know, a lot of tracks, a lot of commotion. Uh, had a little turntable, turned the locomotive. And um, I think, I'm not positive on this, but I think right here, this little straight part, was a big long dock where they would shove all the, for coal, they'd shove all the coal cars up on the dock and dump it off into ships that went up, went up and down the river here. And I think that's it right there. Like you can almost see kind of a cut here. It was a big tall trestle-like. You know, and they had to push it up over the trestle. But I think that's it. Pretty sure I've looked at these maps a lot to find it. But, but anyway, this is the big yard here. And then if you keep going, you know, don't mind my computer, it's slow. But anyway, right here, I think there's a big tower here to control traffic. And this is where the O and W would branch off and it went pretty much straight up this way where West Shore curves off stays right on the coast but O&W is like we were right here like, yeah, I'm sure this house wasn't here so across Shore Road here and went right up along the side of the road here it's kind of high right here and just a little further up let's see it goes along here yeah, you can see it. It's amazing how much you can see a railroad that's been gone for so long. But uh, there's going to be a creek crossing right here. And right here, uh, the O&W bridged it. And if I get the right angle and we get a little lucky, you know, it might be too noisy, but yeah, you can kind of see like a little concrete block right there. If you drive here and stop right here, you can park and look around. You can still see the footings and the abutments for the bridge that was here for O and W, which is pretty cool. And which way did I just rotate? There. And then um, we keep going up. And uh, as far as what you can see from a car, there's not a much, much more. There's like a little stone arch culvert that you can still see around here somewhere. It's a little tricky to see with this, but uh, if you drive you can find some of it around here. But anyway, the next thing is, let's try to zoom out a little bit. As it goes up here, and it gets wiped out here by driveways and whatnot. Uh, a lot of, you know, roads were in one place and the roads were somewhere else. 9W is here and they filled in the bridge that, the road bridge that was over it. See all the fill right here? That's where the railroad crossed under. And it made a curve up this way. I think this is Moodna Yards, maybe. They had a, like five or six tracks. And then, uh, and add a little more even. It's, it kind of runs along Forge Hill Road a bit here. It goes up here. It's very high, like you can see it. 
it's like a shelf on the edge of the hillside here. See that shelf right there? That's it. And it just goes all the way up and around. Following the land, basically. Well, it doesn't really follow the Fort Hill Road, huh? But, um, it follows the creek. Uh, Idlewild Creek, I think it's called. I'm not sure. And then here, this is First Cliff. It served this factory here. There was a, there was a station here. There was a spur going down into this. This was a carpet factory, I think. Uh, let's see. Now, the landscape and whatnot has changed a lot here. Like, the way the roads work has changed a lot. Like, right here, this is Mill Street, the main road. This is kind of on on W track, I think. And this was the only road there was at the time, here. And then you see how it has like a little T intersection here? That's where the main road went. And it made this like crazy little S curve and connected there, I think, and went under the O and W through a little tunnel. And it was sort of like a real tight hairpin S, S curve with a tunnel. So, you know, like the day after O and W was scrapped, they ripped out that tunnel and said, "No, the road's going this way." <laughs> but um, let's see. But yeah, you can kind of, and then I guess the road kind of went through here, maybe. And I, I'm not really from First Cliff necessarily, so I don't know exactly how that worked. But um, come on. Sorry, my computer's really slow. Anyway, First Cliff Station was around here, and there was a bit of a yard, I think, and stuff around in this area here. Yeah, see Old Mill Street? That's what all there was. <laughs> but I have a feeling if, you know, somehow, miraculously, the O&W were to get rebuilt, they would find a way to cross the road. Maybe it would have to be a grade crossing, but they'd figure it out without some crazy S-curve. Uh, and it went down this way. I'm a little... There we go. Then it crossed Mill Road again here. This time it crosses at grade. And now what we have is the Ores Mills Trestle. Big, long trestle, high trestle. that crosses this creek. And there's a valley here. It's kind of hard to tell the satellite. And State Route 32. I just need to find, at least takes a little while to find each end of the trestle. It's a straight trestle, so it's got to be like right here. I think it's right around here. It's hard to find. It's, it's fun when you find stuff like that, though. I think I'm in the right spot. Come on, zoom back out. Yeah, that's got to be it. It's I, I can always find the other end easier. Yeah, see, here's one end. See that big giant concrete block here? That's one abutment of the trestle. Both abutments are still there. It's pretty crazy, actually. So, you go here, you go straight line. Yeah, oh, there it is, right there. You guys might have seen it the first time, but I did not. Right there. There it is. It's so crazy how it's still there. And then, um, I think in the early 60s they were already scrapping all the steel from it. You know, it's a huge trestle. I forget the length on it, but, you know, and in here, it's hard to tell, but there's still a lot of footings that you can find, too. Like, I think somebody hiked it and took pictures. And, uh, and then, and there's the other, this one's easy to find. That's right on the road. If you're driving it, um, this road is very busy and there's nowhere to park, so basically you can maybe take a video of driving past it, but as far as trying to take a picture, it's not easy unless you drive in and pull in this guy's driveway. So, let's see. Zoom back out. This, this uh, Bing Maps is really good detailed satellite images, but it's also kind of slow and laggy, but no, that's my computer. And you can see the cut right here. And amazingly enough, instead of high, it's low here. 
it goes under Beaks Road, which you can see pretty good if you drive it. And then right here, it just amazes me how much of it you can still see on something like this. I think that's it there. And then, uh, keep going. I gotta zoom out a little and kind of lose it. Yeah, here it is here. It goes under New York State Thruway, and even this far zoomed out, you can still see that the overpass that was over O&W is still there. See, it's like a little tunnel that goes under under the highway. Still there, over, under the thruway there. <laughs> and uh, it goes up here. Okay, right here it crosses with, I think that's the Newburgh shortcut of the Erie line. And then a little further up, somewhere else it crosses with Lehigh and Hudson River, I think. Uh, right here is Meadowbrook. The station was around here-ish. Not sure. It's low here. It goes under 94. Or maybe at that time it was only Meadowbrook Road. I'm not sure. But you can kind of tell how it's all filled in here. And then it goes up north here. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to zoom out and move and it's just not very responsive. And then it goes up and around. I think this is where it crosses something. I think the first one was Lehigh and Hudson River and this one's Newburgh Shortcut. Not sure, but yeah. Anyway, the O&W's here. Made like a curve here. Yeah, it's right here. It crosses under Bethlehem Road here, which you can actually see pretty good if you drive this bill. Then it goes alongside Jackson Avenue. And here's the first part where the O&W really gets wiped out. See these houses here? None of those houses were there before. And those houses in their front yards are pretty much right on top of the railroad. So this part of the railroad right here would be trouble. You know, if anybody, some multi-millionaire decided to rebuild it, that would be probably you know, one, two, three, four houses, five, six, five or six houses to, <laughs> you'd have to buy them all out, knock them down or something. Because you can see the railroads right here. It goes along here and then it crosses Jackson here. I think that's Jackson Road, not Jackson Avenue. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But um, it crosses right here. It's very visible right here where it crosses. And it curves off to the west. And sometimes these maps get to the point where you can't zoom in nice. Like, see this part you can zoom in nice, and this dark green part you can't. It's weird. And let's see, it curves, then it crosses the lake. I think, I think this is it right here. Yeah, it is. Yep, right here. And then it crosses uh, Station Road, and there was Little Britain Station here. And that's gone. Yeah. If there's a station that's still around, I'll mention it. And then Tolman Tol Road, Bull Road. And just give you an idea of where we are now. There's like Little Britain the airports up there. Now, if O and W could have, and it would have been real easy, made a, a branch from Denison right here, up straight up north to the to the. Uh, airport if they had the foresight to build that like in the 50s or so when airplane traffic was getting a little more popular they might have been able to survive at least part of it because that could have connected it Stewart airport to the city you know new york city or other places you know and that now that's a big military airport you know who knows what kind of tonnage you could have hauled back and forth there but anyway they didn't and, uh, the Tolman, Bull Road, and then it's in here, up here. And, you know, sometimes you can see it good. I think it's right here now. Sometimes it's pretty much impossible to see. It's either all grown in or taken over by a house or whatnot. Uh, Sean Bate, yeah, there it is down here. See? Yeah, it kind of curves like that. 
Yep, Shaw, Beatty Road. I have a book on uh, Cornwall to Liberty, so that's why I know these crossings. Now, Slovak Lane is actually a little private road here. But what's important about this is the O&W crosses over Slovak Lane. If you can see it, I think you can, there is still a concrete bridge. Look at that bridge. Uh, I can take the labels off. But uh, you can see that right there. It's still there. It's still in good shape. You know, in somebody's driveway. This, it looks like there's still like a right-of-way up along the track there. Somebody's driving over it to get somewhere. And then uh, we're heading towards Rock Tavern now. Now Rock Tavern Station. Let's see. Now the railroad crosses 207 here for Rock Tavern. Right around here is at an angle. 207 was a bridge and they filled it in. But the station was, I think, right here. Never really found it, but I think right around here. It was a post office, too. And then for a while it was just a post office after the railroad. But see, if you drive on 207, like up towards Stewart or whatever, where you're driving this section, you see these... Uh, guardrails on either side pop up for seemingly no reason. The road kind of humps up and back down. That's why, because it's crossing the O&W and it was a bridge. Uh, let me give you an idea of where this is. Uh, that's Forrester Road up there, Twin Arch Road. So between Forrester and Twin Arch, Rock Tavern area. I guess that's all right, Rock Tavern, yeah. And then it runs along here. And then the power lines run along it for a while here. Which is nice. That keeps it in pretty good shape. Crosses 208. Now here there's a there's a sp uh, spur track that comes off of the main line. And it goes down alongside 208. To right here where 208 meets 207. It just runs along 208. And down here at the corner there's uh, Borden's Creamery what's left of it. And that spur came and fed Bern Borden's Creamery. You can see the foundation right here. That's what that spur of track fed. Well, there's a bunch of foundations here and stuff, but that, that's where that spur went. I think they just called it Borden's. And, uh, that's 208 and 207. I'm on a computer. Work with me here. Uh, I don't know how far I'll make it. I don't want to run video too long. But the main line is back up here, the, the power line, it crossed up high over 208 here. And then right, and then across the station road, and then right here, look at that. How obvious is that? This is Burnside. And this, not the other spot, this is Lehigh and Hudson River Railroad crossing. I think they crossed at grade, like diamonds, and you can see the Y's. Uh, bright as day there. It's pretty awesome how well you can see that. And it's like, you know, um, hallowed ground. They never plowed over this triangle intersection here. It's still there. Uh, Burnside Station was around here, I think, but that got torn down, I think, in the 30s or 40s. Anyway, the main line is still here, and it runs, like, pretty much along the edge of this golf course and crossed here Otter Road, I think they even called the Spot Otters, because there were so many little milk stations everywhere, and each milk station had a name, and, it, and each spot with a milk station had a name, and then the power lines turn south, but the main line keeps going this way, yep, Maybrook, right here, oh, that connection at Burnside, I think if you go north, it takes you up to Maybrook, and Maybrook was huge back in the day, and it crosses here, and then here, and um, now right here is a big interchange spot. This is Campbell Hall. And this line here is still in use, actually. Middletown and New Jersey Railroad still uses this line. Well, actually, they just got permission to use it a couple years ago from uh, Norfolk Southern. And that line goes up into Maybrook, and it goes up into uh, Montgomery. And uh, you can see it. See, it's still there. They still use it. 
but um, no, right around, I guess it's right around here-ish, tough to see, but O and W crossed at grade with this line, you know, diamond, and um, it had a station here, and yeah, I think it's right here, and then uh, that's where they went up, they could go up to Maybrook Yards and stuff from there too. So you can see the branches here. Uh, yeah, across right here, I think. Of course, all these houses and stuff, I don't think they were really there. Yep, it went through here somehow. I think I'm missing something. Uh, okay, not that far. It crossed right here. That's Thompson Court with these houses. That wasn't around. Yeah, it crossed, like, right through here. And there it is on the other side here. And uh, just a second, I'm going to see how long this is take. Alright, we're at 20 minutes, so uh, <laughs> this is going to take me forever to make. So I'll see you next time when we start in Campbell Hall. Later.